Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be fixing a build I didn't think was possible to screw up. I have him of course talking about the mathematically correct posture break build by Cyrobe. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? This video might be a little bit drier than my other ones because we were doing such a deep dive into it that I actually had to make a script to write down everything I wanted to say. And then of course, the new patch dropped so I wasn't able to get all the footage I wanted. So the first of many problems is that Cyrobe isn't doing the best critical damage possible. Misery Court has the highest crit damage possible, even though he claims otherwise through whatever testing he did. I'll elaborate more on that later though. So here's a quote that is, of course, satirical, but mimics his intros quite well. I've been making builds since Elden Ring's pre-release, and all my creations use an honest setup. I cap my level at 125, the true meta level, never bothering with great runes, who needs them when they're so scarce, relying solely on practical buffs, only 5 before each fight, to unleash honest and hard hitting damage. Now the absurdity of this statement isn't lost on you I hope. Cyrobe touting this as an honest build without buff stacking is of course a lie, just like him inventing groundbreaking builds that, well, everyone's done before. So patch 1.10 was released and as I was making this list, so let me list the changes ahead of time so I don't waste your time. The Wing of Astel was not nerfed in patch 1.10. I have no idea where Cyro got this idea. If you look at the frame data and you look at the attack data, they are the same, the same as patch 1.09. However, Misery Cord still does more crit damage despite the lies Syro pedals, and it had its crit motion value raised to 588. Execution's Great Axe still does less damage than Misery Code, but it now has a total motion value of 316.25, and this does lead to Execution's Great Axe getting some ground on Misery Cord compared to patch 1.09. This leads to Misery Cord having a 7.39% lead instead of the 12.87% lead it had previously. So it still does more damage, and it's still a decent bit more damage. Cyrobe has somehow made this armor choice worse, which I didn't think was possible. I mean, the Black Knife set has more damage negation and more poise, although not that poise is useful since he isn't reaching the 51 poise breakpoint anyway. But he chose the Lord of Blood's robes which is worse. Some of you may have noticed this little bar on my screen. I am using an <coughs> educational program to allow enemy stance health bars to be seen. This is not normally possible if that wasn't already obvious. And yes, I know it says poise, but just ignore that. I didn't make this and it's a typo. Poise means something else completely, which is a video for another day. Stance health functions yep. almost exactly the same as the actual posture bar featured in Sekiro for any enjoyers watching. Rest assured, all of the damage numbers you see in this video are not modified and are 1000% legit. I'll even link all my spreadsheet data in the description below. So let's get into this because there is a lot. You disingenuous, dense motherfucker. Now all this information applies specifically to patch 1.09. However, not a lot has changed in patch 1.10. He starts to talk about these things called poison stance. He says they're different. They are the same. Poison PvE is often mislabeled as stance by Redditors and clickbait YouTubers who are trying to sound smart. Since that is the way, I have a warning for Cyrobe and anyone who uses the Hexagon Cheat Engine table. That table is very heavily encrypted for no good reason given its history of being malware. It's a spyware table that scans your Discord client and can also be a token logger. And that's just what we know. Please use the Grand Archives table if you happen to use a cheat table. The process to view poise is a little bit more complex, however it is still possible and it displays it a little bit more accurately too. Anyway, as I already said, stance and poise are the same things, so I have no idea why Cyrobe is rambling about the display being a typo and poise being labeled something else completely. Poise is poise. Stance is most likely a mistranslation of poise in one of the helper notes that you get in the game. Then of course we have the Securio Posture Bar reference, which the closest thing we can compare it to is a stamina bar for guarding. Simply, every possible attack that hits an enemy deals a certain amount of stance health damage. 
Much like bleed or poison resistances, every enemy also has a hidden value for stance health, which can greatly vary and is not affected by their regular health or defensive stats. Stance health represents how much stance damage you need to deal within a short amount of time to break an enemy's stance, which is when you usually get to perform a critical hit. Yes, I say usually because this is just a Miyazaki moment where every boss can be stance broken, but some bosses like the Tree Sentinel or Loretta can't take a critical hit after you stance break them. Just like an awkward stun thing. And he is mostly correct in his what is a poise break section, minus the fact that he says poise break for Tree Sentinels or Loretta. He's a weird stagger that is a Miyazaki moment. As if that wasn't how poise breaking worked in the past Tree Souls games. It just shows his lack of knowledge in the other games and how they interact with Elden Ring. If you want to use something that maintained damage poise health, use Fandayers instead of Kukri. They are faster and do more poise damage. The stagger you see enemies have is not caused by poise damage, it is caused by damage level, as you can see in the videos. In this example, you can see that the enemies are being staggered by my halberd, which has 9.25 poise damage, but is a damage level 2 attack. And that enemies are not getting staggered by my fist, which has 10 poise damage, but is a damage level 1 attack. This is very important. Poise does not affect stagger outside of poise breaking. That is entirely reliant on damage level. And I have not seen anyone besides myself mention this. It's end critical damage works. This is a bit tricky. As you may have seen, every weapon in Elden Ring has a critical damage modifier represented by a number ranging from a minimum of 100 to the highest of 140 crit on the Misery Chord. If I butcher that, my bad. These crit numbers on every weapon represents a percentage of how much your damage gets increased during a critical hit, so 100 being 2 times your damage and 140 being roughly 2.4 times. Mo this is my favorite part of the video because he manages to have the data mine attack data for every weapon and yet he still screws up how critical attack works. Just truly a work of brilliance by Syrope here. He is actually right on how the numbers are percentage based right up until he starts talking actual data. Now I'm going to introduce a term most of you, Syrope included, have never heard of and that would be the motion value. A motion value is a term that as far as I've been able to find is borrowed from the Monster Hunter series. Emotion value is a multiplier that applies to various properties of attacks that's represented by a percentage, 100 being 100%. Well, you might be asking why this matters. It matters because the crit value weapon is actually a motion value. But as I already explained, uh, 100 motion value is already 100% of an attack, so that doesn't work for crits because they do so much more damage over a normal attack, right? Well, actually it does. It applies to the class specific crit motion value. So Daggers has a class, have a base motion value of 400 on a repost. Misery Chord has a crit motion value of 140. So 400 times 140 equals 560. Misery Chord has a total motion value of 560, or 5.6 times the base AR. Not the 2.4 times that Syro claimed. I don't know how he got 2.4 times, and honestly I think if you knew basic math, you would know that it is the wrong conclusion to make. Yet here we are. This is a weapon most of you have never used before. Okay, it's the Executioner's Great Axe. Again, there's way too much information to go through this list, but just trust me on this one again. Most of you have probably thought that the best critical damage is the Misery Chord as it has a critical modifier of 140. However, that's technically false. Due to the weapon's overall damage achieving a little over 500 damage, the 140 multiplier does not scale the damage that much higher. The Executioner's Great Axe is the best weapon I've found for critical hits at the meta level of 125. You use the Executioner's Great Axe to pull off that fat crit damage every time, which does over 10,000 damage for each critical hit. Nice. The way I achieve over 10,000 damage is with the use of a few practical buffs that have a ton of synergy and is the result of min-maxing to stay under level 125 and keep my damage as efficient as possible. Again, I use no references and do all of this through A-B testing. His baseless claim about Executioner's Great Axe does interest me, since even with no buffs, Misery Chord out damages it by over 12%. Again, I don't know how he reached this conclusion with testing other than perhaps he used his uninformed knowledge of motion values and didn't actually test. His claim with 10,000 damage on a crit is also incorrect because even with the average PvE negations, you can only reach just under 8.5k when using all of his buffs. Even Misery Chord struggles to reach 10k despite the fact we're using body, aura, and unique buffs, just like Syro Executioner's Great X. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, stacking two 20 second buffs and two 30 second buffs isn't that practical for a general viewer, 
which this video is geared towards. All of my gear and stats and the setup that I use to get the same damage as me. For my gear, I use the Black Knife set for lightweight protection with the Mushroom Crown for its passive buff of 10% increase to all damage when near a source of poison. And with the Kindred of Rot Talisman that also has a 20% buff for also being near a source of poison, which both stack for a 32% increase to all sources of damage. I invented this technique of self-poisoning with the Fetid Pots long ago last year, which will activate both poison buffs, turning yourself into the source of poison, which activates both buffs that last for 20 seconds and even if you cleanse the poison, you still keep the damage. Now for the rest of the talisman, we use the dagger talisman to get an extra 17% critical damage increase, the fire scorpion because our weapon is flame art affinity and increases our fire scaling even further, and lastly the radagon sword seal because of the way our base stats work, and I can already hear the people crying in my comments about the defense reduction, which I've already accounted for with the rest of our stats and gear. The most efficient starting class is the vagabond, where we put 50 points into vigor, use default mana, 20 endurance, 29 strength exactly, default dex, and 20 intelligence just to be able to use the wing of of Astel, and 50 faith to use the extra buffs and cap out the soft cap for the flame art scaling on our executioner's great axe. We already have established that his testing is flawed. Since I don't want to spend too long talking about the gear, the armor isn't optimal, the talismans are less than ideal, and I mean using and recommending source seal is, as I said before, disingenuous and horrible advice. Source seal is not really that useful outside of low level. He did not invent the fetid pots to proc buffs. This has been a thing since the original Dark Souls where you used Dunk Pies to get to Red Tearstone ring range. It was also a thing in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3. This isn't a new concept as to, and to pass it off as such to new players who don't know better is disgusting. His stats are just bad, I mean not having 60 vigor at 125 is a bad start, but having 34 strength, 17 dexterity, 20 intelligence, and 55 faith is just too much hybridizing for this level. I want to conclude this portion of the video and my critique of his build by saying that I never would have made this video had Cyril not done a clickbait YouTube video that misinforms people. In fact, I don't think I would have done my series of fixing YouTube's builds had it not been for Cyro creating these builds and calling them mathematically correct when that is far from the case. I also do not believe drama is a good opportunity for long-term growth on this platform, nor do I want people to come to the conclusion that I'm doing this for popularity. I merely disagree with presenting build guides that actively hamper the player using it. So before we get into my build, I want to present a too long didn't watch. Misery Cord with no buffs will always out damage Execution of Great Axe when comparing critical damage if they both have optimal stats. Poison PVEs often mislabeled as stance due to the info item you can acquire, However, poise is what it's called in other aspects of the game. And the Wing of Astel unique skill, Nebula, is the fastest way to break poise in PvE. Now, for my much improved build, of course we have 60 of air because that is the bigger soft cap. We have 12 endurance to have enough quip load to not front roll and still get 51 poise. We have 17 dexterity for Wing of Astel, although you could use a dagger with glint blade phalanx for more consistent poise damage, and you could then lower dexterity and put more into intelligence. We have 77 intelligence, which is past the major soft cap of 50, but not the final soft cap of 80. And really, once you get to 50 intelligence, you can kind of invest into whatever, but 80 intelligence does get you the most damage. For weapons, we have the Magic Mystery Cord, the Wing of Astel, and the Carrying Glintblade Staff, which we are using to cast Terra Magica for the 35% increase to magic damage. For armor, we have the Mushroom Crown, the Altered Fingerprint Armor, the Godskin Noble Bracelets, and the Fingerprint Greaves to get us the 51 Poise Breakpoint. Our Talismans are the Kindred Arat's Exaltation to boost our damage when Poison procs nearby, the Magic Scorpion Charm to boost our magic damage, and the Dagger Talisman to boost our critical hits, along with the Erdtree's Favor plus 2 to boost our HP, Stamina, and Equip Load. We don't have a great rune because according to Syro, it is dishonest or some other absurd statement. And for the crystal tiers, we have the magic sharding crack tier to boost our magic damage, along with the stone barb crack tier to boost our poise damage. The additional buffs we have are useful, but not needed to out damage his build, and those are the blood boil aromatic and the uplifting aromatic. In total we get 21.88% more damage on our critical attacks compared to Syro's build, I wouldn't recommend this build, however, as you are losing out on the very impressive DPS sorceries like Night Comet or Carrion Slicer. You also lose out on a full Wing of Astel setup, which will kill bosses much faster than this gimmick crit build Cyro attempted to make.